Welcome back. The federal government, as we just heard, will announce a billion dollar investment in schools in the Tuesday budget. In order for the states to qualify for that cash, students will have to meet basic standards. Children as young as five will be skills tested on entrance and maths or science will be compulsory for year 12 students. And joining us to discuss for the Sunday jury is Shell Shocked Media's Shelley Horton and the Australian Financial Review's Phil Baker. A very good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Phil, You're fired to up. You first. Yep, all fired up. What do you think of this boost? Oh, Amelia, I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure it's anything new. Already some schools in some states test kids when they're five or six, if you really wanted to have them tested to get an idea of how they're travelling, which is a good idea. And I think the maths and science issue is a really important one. Um, we all know that English is compulsory in Year 12, but, but maths isn't. Mm. And I think actually some level of maths is very important mm. uh, for someone in Year 12. Um, when they're sort of uh, f perhaps six or seven years older again and they're out in the real world doing their mm -hmm. numbers, buying sort of uh, properties and perhaps doing dealing in financial products, mm. I want them to be you know, numerically literate yeah. so they don't get ripped off. So I think actually some level of maths in Year 12 is really important. Mm. Well, Maths and society on the way for me. Well, spoken by a financial <laughs> bloke. <laughs> what do you think? You we reckon used these... to call it veggie maths. Veggie like, I yeah. was like so bad at maths and science, very good at English. But mm. you did it. No, so well, I didn't do science it. in year 12. No. I did, but you did do maths. I did maths in society. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It has not really helped me for society. I now have my own business and I am struggling <laughs> with the accounts. So I actually think that this is. These are life skills. Mm. This is actually really important. It's I love sense. that we're coming back to basics. Let's drop some of the fluff that we have in the curriculum. Let's get back to actually getting people knowing, you know, the, the, the basics of, of maths and reading and science and things like that. I also think that what we need to do is, yes, we need to test these people because my parents are both retired school teachers and they said often they would be pressured to allow mm. students to go through because of, you know, that was the way the system mm -hmm. worked. And really, who's that benefiting? Yeah. It's not yeah. benefiting the kids. I agree. I think we're all in agreement on that one. Uh, moving on, a leading early education academic says preschoolers should be introduced to the subject of <laughs> same-sex marriage. The paper discusses the importance of political activism in the early learning sector. I mean, Shelley, we're talking about kids, you know, daycare, young kids, three, four, five years old. Surely a little bit too young to be knowing about this. Absolutely not. I think we Come start on. from birth because, you know, and I don't like the word political activism. What it is, it's just normalisation of everyone so that it's not there's a mummy and a daddy and that's the only option. I think that if you just make it, yeah, people are different. People have different options. Don't make a big deal of it. Don't have to go into what homosexuality is or, mm. or what a same-sex marriage is, but just say, yeah, some people have but I think, mummy and mummy. I some... think that's what this article is pushing for, going into detail and having that political activism. And I've got a problem with that term as well. Yeah. Isn't it, Phil, up to parents? I want to tell my son at that age... Uh, anyone who loves each other can marry anyone, which is what we believe. Except in this country. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Should be able to. Isn't that what the role of families and parents? Well, all education should start at home in mm. one way, I think, Amelia. But uh, I think uh, age appropriate is, is a good sort of thought here. I think that uh, actually at preschool age, why don't you have the preschool teacher themselves uh, especially trained to deal with these sort of issues when and as they arise? So it's not such a big deal if a halfway through term there's a new student who comes into the classroom and there's two mothers that come in or two fathers that come in mm. with that child. And, and this preschool teacher goes, no problem, hello, come on in, welcome to, the, to this classroom here. And have the preschool teachers teaching um, that respect to everybody, everybody's a bit different, um, and have that sort of concept that Can everybody's I just different. jump in to disagree? <laughs> because I grew up in country Queensland in a very small um, country town called Kingaroy, and we, don't, we didn't have any mummies and mummies coming into school. So does that mean that I don't get exposed to it until I move, move towns and then it's a shock? I think it has to be everyone's told about it. But an official it. part of the curriculum? Yeah. Why not? Mm. Well, if, OK, so why is it OK that it's, there's always a mum and dad? That's just a given. Mm -hmm. It should be a given that it can be... Options. OK, fair enough. Look, we're going to move on to the break. Uh, we've got some more big topics to cover. Should women with children be given maternity leave? Uh, women without children, that's coming up next on Today. <laughs> Should
Yeah, welcome back to the Sunday Jury. An author in the US is facing a firestorm of outrage after she claimed that women without children should be entitled to me-ternity leave to focus on themselves and their goals. Shelley, she has mm -hmm. opened a can of worms. Over to you. Look, I have been very vocal about being child-free by choice. Mm. And you know what? I want to throttle this woman because I have fought and battled against... Um, other women calling me selfish mm. because I choose not to have children. For this woman to say that maternity is a holiday, that it is a chance to reassess your goals, I've got girlfriends. I've Thank asked you. them to give me an hour by hour description <laughs> of their day. I could not do that for one day, let alone for a year or mm. for the rest of their lives. She has already been backing out of interviews. This woman has obviously realised she's made a massive mistake, but I am just furious that this has become putting women against women again. And you know what? The best thing about being child-free by choice, if you want to have a break and have a sabbatical, you can. Okay. You don't have to worry about school mm. fees, you don't have to worry about school terms. Just go and do it. Phil, Phil, me eternity. Uh, you know, you and I are fathers. What about pa eternity? <laughs> eh? That's right. I'm up for that because I think it's such an important role that we do and it should be taken very seriously. This is a, uh, it's a very uh, labour intensive job. You want to create that bond with your child. Mm. Um, it's about raising children and the proper children that will be, you know, makely, hopefully make a really better society. So I think it's a, a bit of a broader issue. Um, you know, what do we want? A, you know, a whole uh, range of rat bags in mm. 20 years' time might come back to bite us on the bum, so to speak. So I think it's a really important role that we need to do it properly. All right. I had Great lots stuff, of girls. plans for my pregnancy holidays, as I called them, mm. until I went on maternity leave. Whole another story. Stay Let's with face us. it, kids are intense. <laughs> yes. Okay? Kids are intense. It ain't no holiday. Thank you both. We'll be back right after this. Stay with us.